Welcome back, everyone. I know that there haven't been that many news videos, more like book reviews up until now for the past month or so, mostly because uh, I don't really want to do too many videos about the Wu flu <laughs> because uh, a lot of the information is touch and go. I think that as the situation clears up and, and there's more data available maybe i'll do videos I, I am planning on doing a writing project about it which i could cover here i'm supposed to have i'm supposed to be having a, an article come out tomorrow or it might be today because today's sunday on american greatness about a long journalistic uh, investigation that i did stretching back a few years in any case um there is going to be a chat today at 12.30. I want you to join in 12.30 Eastern Time, okay? So 12.30 in the afternoon with Stephen Jimenez, who is the author of the Book of Matt, a book that delves into what is likely the real motivation for the Matthew Shepard murder in 1998. In any case, the, today's video going to deal with the issue of Bernie Sanders and what's left of his campaign. And to be sure, I don't think that there's much left anyway in terms of what's going on in this primary. It's basically frozen to a halt. The coronavirus has virtually made this election season a curiosity compared to all the other news. Uh, people are not really trying to go out and do much of anything, least of all, go queue up and uh, vote for somebody. And I've seen a lot of critics of the Democratic Party, especially Jamal Thomas and Jimmy Dore, criticizing Joe Biden and the Democrats, Tom Perez, and various state Democratic leaders for continuing the whole primaries. And I think I understand that because who are the people who generally vote in the highest numbers? Senior citizens, the same group that is generally most vulnerable to the coronavirus. So I have to say that in terms of that, I would probably say, yeah, I'm in agreement with the progressives, even if in general I don't support their political perspective. I think that it is pretty dangerous to hold uh, you know, in-person voting during a situation like this, and that there's got to be a different way, and I, I don't know what to do. It's, it's very confusing, but the fact is that as of right now, and this is something that has been repeatedly lobbied against, people are trying to get this canceled. The Wisconsin primary is scheduled for the 7th, which is this Tuesday. And if if Bernie Sanders loses the Wisconsin primary, I would say that his path forward is, is virtually, I mean, wh where, where does it go? Okay, let's look at the primary map. Okay, I think that there's a map, there's no map here. <laughs> so I was looking at the 20... 16 results for Alaska, which is also coming up sometime this week. Uh, but in any case, you have the Midwest. It has so far been Joe Biden. So you, he, he did win Michigan. He did win Minnesota. He did win Illinois. Min Michigan was the only state that in 2016, of the ones I just mentioned, was won by Bernie Sanders. The polls are showing that Bernie Sanders will probably lose Wisconsin, which was the other state in the Midwest that he won. And I can only assume that if he loses Wisconsin, he'll probably lose Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and West Virginia, which are all the states that made up the, you know, the, those are the Midwest. And, and uh, if, if Bernie Sanders loses those states... What exactly is his campaign running on in terms of a basis for saying, well, we're the real representatives of the working class? I get it that they think their policies are superior and that they have a better vision 
than Joe Biden. And I, I would agree that they have at least they at least have a vision as opposed to him who, you know, but Joe Biden is basically the candidate for eating dinner at 430 and go and going antique shopping before going to sleep. That, that's that's what Joe Biden is. Uh, he would be an embarrassment as president. People think that it's just uh, intolerable to have Donald Trump. The fact is, if you look at now, I changed the setup of his room. So the desk is actually 90 degrees <laughs> shifted from where it was. But I do have a book by Ronald Kessler that actually goes into, here we go. It goes into the fact that Joe Biden did skinny dip as vice president in front of female agents. And this is, this is not some book by some Yahoo. It goes, it, it interviewed dozens of Secret Service agents about their experiences. And uh, yeah, Joe Biden is, is definitely a creeper. So I will try to look for more sourcing on that. But th this is, so, so Joe Biden, for all these years, he's gotten away with everything. There's this, this Me Too issue right now with that woman whose name escapes me at the moment, uh, Tara Reid, I think her name was, who came forward and said that he digitally penetrated her. So I do believe that Joe Biden would be an embarrassment as president. The fact is that Bernie Sanders has been rejected categorically by the electorate in, in the Midwest as well as elsewhere. He didn't get that convincing Iowa victory that he probably should have gotten because of DNC shenanigans. And I, I will grant that he, he should probably be a little closer than where he is, but not by much. Can someone explain why he didn't win as resoundingly in Vermont as he did in 2016? Why there's less people who are showing up to vote? Even if he has more enthusiasm than Joe Biden, it's pretty clear that the support that he has now is much weaker than it was back in 2016. And you look at this whole section of the map, the Southeast, which is the traditional Deep South. He's been completely swamped in all those states. Nothing's changed. Did, did, he, did he do anything to gain more votes in those southern states in 2020 than he did in 2016? Why is he consistently just getting bushwhacked all over the South which, like it or not, even if it doesn't vote for the Democrat in the general election, except maybe Virginia, that is a huge treasury of delegates. And by losing those states, you can't win the presidency. It just is impossible. So there's also people who are trying to get him to withdraw. It says a small group of Bernie Sanders' top aides and allies, including his campaign manager, and his longtime strategists have encouraged the independent senator from Vermont to consider withdrawing from the presidential race, according to two people with knowledge of the situation. The group includes campaign manager Faiz Shakir and Representative Pramila Jayapal, a top Sanders surrogate and ally, according to the people who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe sensitive private discussions. Sanders himself has become more open to the prospect of dropping out, according to one of the people with knowledge of this situation and another close ally, especially if he suffers a significant defeat in Tuesday's Wisconsin primary, which polls suggest Joe Biden will win, will win handily. Yeah, that, and it's true. It looks like Joe Biden, his, his lead seems to have grown. It was at 11 percent at the beginning of March. Right. When when uh, Biden was starting to, you know, when basically everybody rolled over and started playing dead for him. And uh, it's just grown from there because all the anti Sanders people have coalesced and, and gone against Sanders. And they've they've rolled up behind Biden, except for Elizabeth Warren, who hasn't endorsed anyone because nobody cares. Beyond Shakir and Jayapal, longtime st strategist Jeff Weaver has privately made a case that exiting the race more quickly and on good terms with Biden would give Sanders more leverage in the long run. What what long run? According to one of the people, the other said was Weaver has used a light touch in presenting his case. Weaver and Jayapal did not return calls and messages seeking comment. Shakir declined to comment. So so Jeff Weaver. So the, this is, this is something that I find interesting. 
they're trying to say, oh, he'll have more leverage in the long run. There is no long run. Bernie Sa this is the last campaign where Bernie Sanders will be a viable camp. He'll be a viable candidate for president. He has to go for broke now, and he hasn't. But he has to go for broke because there is no tomorrow for him. In 2024, he will be over 80 years old. People will probably be saying that he's run for president two times and he's not going to get another, uh, you, you know, with, they, they say that there's um, there's a thing where a, th a third, third time is not the charm for presidential candidates. Once you've run two times, you're guaranteed to fail. And that's why it's, it's also pretty surprising that the party coalesced behind Joe Biden. I would have said that in, in February, the DNC should have pulled strings to force him out because Joe Biden clearly is not the person who he used to be. And even back then, he wasn't, a, he wasn't great. You can look up all of his plagiarism issues. You can bring up all of the ridiculous comments he made about firearms and about, uh, you know, 7-Eleven owners and things like that. So I would say that at the moment, we're seeing the race basically clear up as, as pulling for Donald Trump in the best way possible, even, even given the national crisis, right? Sanders has not made a final decision, the people said, and other close allies have privately urged him to keep running, such as national campaign co-chair Nina Turner, while Representative Rashida Tlaib is also set to favor him remaining in the race. These are people who, so Nina Turner and Rashida Tlaib have no bridges left with the DNC. They've already burnt their bridges and they're, they're probably not going to be able to rebuild them because they don't have any, they don't have anything to offer, right? Nina Turner is a former state legislator from over here. She actually, I believe she used to represent my district in Ohio and she is very popular among progressives, but other than that, she doesn't have any imprint. She's basically a person who has, uh, you know, she's she's, um, you know, she's darkened too many doorsteps. And to be fair, while she's very passionate about the policies she supports, what real receipts can she show? She hasn't done much. She's just as bad as the rest of the Democratic Party in terms of accomplishments. It's just the rhetoric is a little different. Larry Cohn, a longtime ally who chairs a nonprofit aligned with Sanders, is waging a public campaign for him to stay in until the, the, the Democratic National Convention. The Sanders campaign declined to comment on internal deliberations. The split in Sanders' inner circle to some degree reflects the hybrid nature of his political identity as both a traditional politician and a movement leader. Advisors with stronger ties to the Democratic Party have been more vocal in urging him to contemplate a withdrawal while independent activists have been pushing for Sanders to remain in the race. Cohn, for example, is one of the latter. Millions of people are counting to him, on him to be on the ballot so they can vote for the alternative vision that they support, Cohn said. And if he was not on the ballot, they will feel abandoned. One of the people with knowledge of the situation said they believe Sanders has warmed to the idea of bowing out in the near future since he has been unable to make up any ground on Biden and is bracing for another potential landslide loss in Wisconsin, a state he won four years ago. One of the people predicted that if Sanders loses Wisconsin by more than 15 points, he probably would get out of the race and get behind Biden. Beyond Wisconsin, this person said there are concerns among at least some in the campaign about the criticism and the, criticism in the press of Sanders as a spoiler, who is making it harder for Democrats to defeat President Trump. They also believe it will be difficult to change the dynamic in a race that has been frozen in place by the coronavirus crisis. Close Sanders associates have long said the senator and his wife Jane Sanders are the ultimate deciders and they are expected to reach any decision jointly. Sanders believes strongly that people in his movement need to be consultant, however, according to one of the people with knowledge of the situation. Sanders said Friday on MSNBC that he was acutely aware of his massive deficit to Biden was taking a hard look at his future. Earlier in the week, he told late night host Seth Meyers that he still had a narrow path to victory. I, I would dispute that. I think, look, I don't know what would justify Sanders staying in in terms of winning. I think that the only reason that he should stay in is because he, he would truly believe that Joe Biden 
is not a credible leader. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Either way, there, there is no correct decision here. Because this idea that, oh, you, you pull out now, as Jeff Weaver is saying, and you sort of set yourself up for a better situation later. There, there is no later for him. This is, this is the last stand. So by dropping out now, Bernie Sanders basically admits that his career running for president is over. That's the way I see it, and I don't see a different way to look at it. Although conceivably, yeah, you, you could run for president at the age of 82, which I think he would I think he would be 82 years old. So in four years, you would have the White House, you know, you definitely wouldn't even have Trump running because he would be either serving out his second term or he wouldn't he wouldn't be running again after losing in 2020 if he does lose uh, because the, the, that hasn't happened since the 1800s that somebody won non-consecutive terms. So you would be facing a, a completely fresh Republican face. And on the Democratic side, you would have old melty face Bernie Sanders. Um, so, yeah, the, this, the rest of it is a lot of just conjecture. Um, it actually says here that, that um, Governor Tony Evers is urging a delay in the primaries. Um, but but apparently the, the GOP is going to let it keep going. Wow. I, I don't know. I, I guess, look, I might have to stand on the side of the Democrats on this. I, I don't think that old people should be going to vote in primaries at this point. It's not as important as, um, you know, not dying, I guess. But that's just me. So uh, I know Stix Hexenhammer has been saying, oh, it's it's wrong for these states to cancel the primaries. They need to finish this up or whatever. I don't think that, look, I think that if, if these primaries are to be a process where people are encouraged to participate, um, the people that are that want to participate, then you can't hold them in the midst of this epidemic. Uh, now, Biden, so this is, this is shifting to the real issue right now. We're going to see Joe Biden start picking out people who are, um, you know, vice presidential candidates. And... It says among the top candidates are Senator Kamala Harris, Senator Amy Klobuchar, and Stacey Abrams, who narrowly lost her race for Georgia governor in 2018. My prediction is Kamala Harris. I wrote an article about it a few weeks ago. Um, you can actually find it here. Talking about why she will probably be the candidate. I think that Kamala Harris is everything that the Democrats are looking for in terms of a vice presidential candidate. Now, I think she's going to be a horrible pick, and I think that almost anyone that Joe Biden would pick would be awful. The other two people on the list, Amy Klobuchar and Stacey Abrams, I, I certainly don't think that they would be great, but I think Kamala Harris is, is the absolute worst, worst person. In my opinion, as of all the candidates who ran for president in 2016, in 2020, I mean, she was the worst of all. She was a she. She was and remains a danger to personal freedom and civil liberties in this country. And I think that pretty soon, once Bernie Sanders is forced to drop out, which which I'm pretty sure he will be, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about Kamala Harris as the vice presidential. Not a nominee for the Democrats. But yeah, I could be wrong and we'll have to wait until then. That's about it. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can also find me on all these mediums, YouTube, BitChute, Minds.com, Subscribestar, and Gab. And you can also find me. Um, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be doing this live stream today. Hold on a second. Uh, it's going to be with uh, Stephen Jimenez. And a second. So it's going to be on his book, The Book of Matt, which he's putting out a new version of this or, or a new edition in June. So check that out. It's at 1230 and I'll talk to you later. Have a great Sunday.